What happens when lift overcomes gravity? What happens when thrust overcomes drag? What happens when they are equal and opposite? An airplane takes off. Similarly, as India is poised to become the global leader in workforce technology and growth of the next decade, already fueled to provide the thrust and lift that will propel India's takeoff, is a state where growth has reached double digit figures on the pillars of industry, agriculture, and service economies. A state where good governance is already laying the foundations of empowered citizens, employable youth, and educated Gen Next. A state where peace, security, health, high quality of education and administrative and financial discipline are measurable. A state where policies and systems are not an obstacle, but a driving force for innovation and growth. A state called Gujarat. Undoubtedly, the growth engine of India. As this development story unfolded, Gujarat entered into the golden era of its statehood on 1st May 2010. Not once to be complacent with our achievements, we wanted to ensure the continual implementation, measurement and monitoring of this remarkable transition and converted this golden moment into a golden opportunity. We re-evaluated our goals, institutionalized them and made them self-sustaining for the coming decades. We set new benchmarks and standards of excellence and were born the 50 goalposts of success. The Swarnim Siddhis. This golden year has revealed the sheer strength of people power making unprecedented achievements. Whether it was the Vanche Gujarat program involving half a crore people or Samedan of 5 crore man-hours or record in tree plantation, Swarnim Sankalp or Khel Mahakumbh, 1 lakh people learning Sanskrit or 20,000 people participating in a chess tournament establishing a new world record. Whether it was a show of economic strength with presence of 101 countries and 19 states of India during vibrant Gujarat Global Investors Summit 2011 and the partnering of developed nations like Japan and Canada re-emphasized the global identity of Gujarat. The summit witnessed the signing of 8,380 MOUs, garnering an investment of 20.83 lakh crore rupees. The Human Development Index witnessed significant improvement due to Swarnim Siddhis achieved during the Golden Jubilee year, wherein to achieve reduction of the maternal mortality rate from 160 to 130 per lakh expectant mothers, institutional deliveries were increased from 82% to 93.5%. Medical treatment provided within first three months of pregnancy increased from 60% to 69.86% and increased the percentage of women being given postnatal care from 65% to above 80%. Reduction in infant mortality rate from 52 to 48 per thousand deliveries. This was achieved by increasing rate of immunization and sensitizing mothers towards breastfeeding. Implementing the Mamta Abhyan, under which every newborn and school going child is provided health care. The skewed sex ratio, particularly bad in four districts and 17 talukas was also brought to better levels during the course of the year. Special steps taken for adolescent girls by providing health, education and self-employment training in the age group of 11 to 18 years, covering 4.5 lakh beneficiaries. Starting the nutrition mission to eradicate malnutrition from the state. Providing primary health care to the urban poor. The 1 lakh Siddhis statewide skills enhancement, empowerment of women and youth, faster generation of employment, creating efficient and accessible labor markets for all skill categories, 
improving education and training systems were major areas of focus. Livelihood opportunities were created for over 4.26 lakh people during the Golden Jubilee year itself. Over 1 lakh jobs in the industrial sector created. Over 1 lakh women linked to microfinance via Sakhi Mandal Yojana. Over 1 lakh youth provided employment related skills by the Gujarat Knowledge Society. Over 1 lakh urban poor youth provided skills development training under the Umid Yojana. Balanced Regional Development The remarkable progress in achieving the objectives of balanced regional growth and the flagship schemes of the state speak volumes of the state government's commitment to Taluka-centric inclusive development. One Bandhu Kalyan Yojana This flagship scheme has brought about a sea change in the 43 tribal dominated talukas of the state which have witnessed development on both fronts qualitative as well as quantitative so far the amount allocated for the program has already exceeded 17,788 crore rupees against the original allocation of 15,000 crore rupees a quick glance at the before and after scenario will reiterate the success of the program which has become a model for other states to follow institutional delivery rate which was earlier just 68% has now increased to 87% against just 4% tribal families having tap water connection today 36% families have tap water connection 5.61 lakh new tap water connections provided land under micro irrigation which was non-existent before today covers 32,000 hectares with 23,000 beneficiaries the percentage of cultivable land under irrigation has increased from 37% to 50%. The intake of fruits at various APMC in these areas has increased by 146%, while intake of vegetables has increased 48%. The tribal areas, which never had a cold storage earlier, today have 15 cold storages to store flowers, fruits and vegetables. The number of ITIs which stood at 60 earlier has today increased to 139. In fact, 30 tribal youths have today obtained jobs abroad, which is a significant achievement of the program. Nursing, which was an unheard term till yesterday, is now a booming career prospect with 10 nursing schools being set up. Agriculture college and agro institutes, which were non-existent earlier, have today increased to six. 145 new secondary and higher secondary schools including 95 science stream schools started 28,000 individuals given rights to use forest land for livelihood 4.84 lakh households provided electrification Sagar Khedu Sarvangi Vikas Yojana launched in March 2007 for the holistic development of coastal areas and people living in the 38 coastal talukas of the state. This ambitious 12-point flagship scheme was anticipated to have a total allocation of 11,000 crore rupees in the 11th plan, against which 16,076.5 crore rupees have been allocated, of which a significant amount of 9,788 crore rupees is by way of PPP. Some of the notable achievements of the scheme have been a short supply of drinking water to 3,000 villages, soil and water conservation through construction of bandhara, tide regulators and check dams, existing electricity distribution lines replaced with non-corrosive wires, significantly augmenting power availability. New schools including science stream schools have been set up in the coastal areas. New buses have been introduced in coastal areas. Health facilities have been upgraded with additional mobile vans and 108 EMRI. Focused efforts made to upgrade and improve infrastructure, especially in minor ports and fishing harbors. As a result of these initiatives, marine exports from major and minor ports of Gujarat have witnessed a significant increase of almost 50% from 1,20,000 tons to 1,84,000 tons. Overall exports 
which stood at 1,141.97 crore rupees in 2007-2008, have increased to 1,838.75 crore rupees in 2009-2010. Agriculture Only an improved performance in agriculture can lead to inclusive growth. This is a success formula which has achieved resounding success in Gujarat. The Krishi Mahotsav initiative of the government has successfully taken the agriculture knowledge from the lab right to the doorstep of the farmers. The past year saw a major expansion in irrigation and water management. During the last five years, more than 2.5 lakh hectares of land has been brought under drip irrigation. The construction of more than 5.5 lakh water conservation structures has had a considerable impact on the levels of the groundwater table, which has witnessed an average rise of about 4.31 meters across the state over the past eight years. More than 7,23,580 Kisan credit cards and 23,62,946 soil health cards were provided to farmers. Concern for the poor In keeping with the spirit of the Golden Jubilee Year celebrations, we analyzed the requirements of the poor, set targets and developed a strategy to achieve a quantum jump in our fight against poverty. All Antayodhya and BPL ration card holders were provided soya fortified flour in a phased manner to improve their nutritional status. Against 10.28 lakh houses constructed in the 25 year period from 1976 to 2000, 13.58 lakh houses were constructed during the last decade alone, of which 8.56 lakh were constructed in the last three years. 1 lakh SC and ST BPL families with some agricultural land were provided assistance under land improvement, irrigation and horticulture development. Gharib Kalyan Mela In a unique innovation to eliminate corruption with efficiency, a direct system of distribution to both rural and urban poor was pioneered through Gharib Kalyan Melas held in all districts, talukas and urban centers. 4,859 crore rupees of funds were directly distributed, including check, auto and cycle repairing kits, sewing machines, cycles for the disabled, benefiting 37 lakh people. The Garib Kalyan Melas have instilled a sense of confidence in the people and created a conducive environment within the state to fight against poverty. State of the Economy as we enter in the last year of the 11th plan, it would be worthwhile to look back at the first decade of the century. Although the 10th plan commenced soon after the devastating earthquake of 2001, we could still lay the foundations of sustained double-digit growth during the entire decade. A quick glance at the GSDP during the first decade clearly indicates the double-digit average annual growth rate of 10.3% achieved by the state in agriculture, manufacturing and services. The resurgent nature of the state's economy is evident from the fact that even after being affected by the global economic meltdown in 2008-2009, where its average annual growth rate dropped to 6.96%, it was quick to recover and come back to the double-digit growth achieving 10.23% in 2009-2010 and 11.58% in 2010-2011. Despite experiencing deficit rainfall of 25% against the normal rainfall of 800 to 900 mm once in every three years, the state agricultural economy performed at an average annual growth rate of 10.7% during the first decade of 21st century. Cotton, wheat, fruit crops and milk have played a vital role in sustaining the agricultural growth. It is expected that against the national growth rate of 9%, the state economy would achieve the targeted growth of 11.2% during the 11th five-year plan. Annual Development Plan 2011-2012
In the annual plan 2011-2012, our priorities remain continued emphasis on human development and social sectors with a big thrust to infrastructure and improving citizen-centric services and e-governance. During the year 2011-2012, size of annual plan has been fixed at 37,152.68 crore rupees, a marked increase of 23.8% over the annual development plan of 2010-2011 that stood at 30,000 crore rupees. The final size of the 11th plan would reach 1,27,652.68 crore rupees, which will exceed the target of 1,11,111 crore rupees set at the beginning of the plan period. Looking ahead towards the 12th plan. As we look ahead to the 12th plan, we have developed a unique 50 point program called Swarnim Sopans which will become the blueprint of development. This 50-point program contains both the vision as well as the roadmap for the state's development in the 12th plan. The major focus will continue to be on human development and inclusive growth with sustainable double-digit growth in agriculture, manufacturing and services, improving quality of life, increasing livelihood opportunities, empowerment of the youth and women, emphasis on good governance and citizen-centric services and meeting challenges of the future will be the major objectives in the 12th plan. In order to empower people locally to partner and guide the growth process, we have initiated the concept of Apno Taluko Vibrant Taluko, a sub-district citizen-centric approach where governance and development is activated at the grassroots level. Every taluka in Gujarat will be empowered to provide a local platform for driving double-digit growth and social development. We are pioneering a new model of growth based on grassroots planning and consent from people rather than control of the government, which is the essence of democratic inclusiveness. Empowerment of women would be a major thrust area under Mission Mangalam. The Gujarat Livelihood Promotion Company will work with the primary objective of linking self-help groups with the formal banking system, microfinance and sustainable livelihoods. It will promote innovative livelihood initiatives by involving corporate houses to initiate social business enterprises. As a result, public-private partnership and professionalism would be integrated with poverty eradication and women empowerment by creating livelihood opportunities through profitable, sustainable and scalable ventures. Infrastructure would hold the key to facilitating investment for sustained growth. Gogha Dahej Ferry Service BRTS in major cities of the state Metro Rail Facilities in Ahmedabad Gandhinagar Implementation of Last Mile Connectivity Program to connect the Dahej and Hazira ports with a Delhi-Mumbai Industrial Corridor and dedicated freight corridor. Gujarat is already a power surplus state with 13,258 megawatts of installed capacity of which 3,658 megawatts have been added during the last five years. In addition to these, Gujarat has also set up the country's first solar park. The Gujarat Solar Park which will be spread over 3,000 hectares with an installed capacity to produce 500 megawatts of clean, green energy. And while Gujarat goes about laying the foundation for the next decade, the mantra is simple and straight. Think ahead. Move ahead. Be ahead. That's how we plan, grow and progress. That's how we fuel the growth engine of the nation. Gujarat, leading India into a vibrant future.